Yate, hey, my relatives. Hello, this is Mark Charles. It is uh, January 12th, Wednesday, and I'm sitting down drinking my second cup of coffee, and I wanted to jump online and just talk with you about a few things, especially regarding uh, the Omicron variant and COVID-19 mask wearing. But uh, before I begin, let me start, as I always do, by acknowledging that I'm speaking to you from what are now uh, the that's now known as Washington, D.C., but these are the traditional lands of the Piscataway. And I want to honor the Piscataway as the host people of these lands. I want to thank them for their stewardship of the lands. And I want to just, again, state how humbled I am to be living on these lands today. I see a few people are joining already. Uh, Diana, great to great to have you here. Thanks for joining and making a comment. Um if you follow me on social media, you know that most mornings or several mornings a week, I like to go out and watch the sunrise. And uh, I went out twice this week. I went out yesterday morning and this morning. And there were some really gorgeous sunrises out there. I want to actually show you some of the pictures that I took. Uh, let me let me. camera back on. There we go. Um, so good to have you here. If you, again, been following me, especially on my second cups of coffee, you know that a few days ago, I mentioned that one of our family members, my daughter, uh, tested positive for COVID. Um, it was on Christmas Eve that she tested positive and uh, she had been feeling a uh, sore throat for a few days. And so Christmas Eve, we decided to go in and get her tested. And uh, she tested positive and I tested negative. And so the rest of our family went in and the rest of us tested negative, but our daughter was positive. And so she had to go into isolation um, for about a week uh, over Christmas, pretty much the week between Christmas and New Year's. And again, you're probably very aware that our family has been very cautious with, uh, with COVID-19. We have not traveled much. We social distance. We are very kind of uh, rigorous with our mask wearing. Um, and we do a lot to make sure that we protect our own health as well as the health of the people around us. And yet we still got COVID. And that's actually the, the case with a lot of people right now. Um, if you are watching, the number of COVID cases are averaging, I think, over a million a day right now. Um, and some experts are estimating that the number might even be up to five times higher than that because of the massive amount of people who are doing home tests right now, which doesn't necessarily record a positive test um, in the system in any way unless you self-report it. And so they think it could be several times higher than, than the one million per day that we're currently getting. And this is pretty much due to the Omicron variant, which is highly contagious. And so the day that my daughter uh, tested positive, um, our family had been wearing cloth masks. And you probably recognize this mask right here. Um, this is one of the masks I wear very frequently. It's kind of a blue cloth mask. I decided early on in the pandemic to wear cloth masks. 
um, because I, I wanted to have something that could be easily washed and reusable so we weren't creating a bunch of waste. And I've been very uh, faithfully <laughs> washing my masks daily and uh, wearing cloth masks. But uh, again, our, our family still, our, one of our family members still came down with COVID and our, our children were also wearing cloth masks at school as well. And they're very uh, strict. Um, they do a very good job of wearing their masks. And so I decided that we should probably uh, up our mask game. And so that day, it was on Christmas Eve, I actually went out and I went to go find some N95 masks. And I found uh, some of these masks. These are the expandable uh, N95 masks. I, I looked around a few places, actually found them at Home Depot. And um, this is a fairly common mask that you'll see. And it's the N95, which is a, a lot more rigorous, or a lot more, a lot stronger than the other masks. And I bought some of those masks. And then we ordered some uh, online and we ordered some KN95 masks. I, first, I wasn't even aware what the difference was. I think the primary difference is KN, KN95 masks are um, produced in China. And KN95 is the standard in China that is fairly similar to the N95 standard here in the U.S. And so I did some research and we ordered uh, a package, two packages actually of KN95 masks. And uh, our family has been wearing them ever since. And you can feel right away when you're out, when you're wearing an N95 or a KN95 that uh, the masks are actually much stronger. Um, you can actually feel it's a little harder to suck in, you, to suck in air. Um, there's a, a tighter seal around the face and the chin. Um, and because that's the way the masks are, are designed. Uh, they're designed actually to not only prevent you from exhaling and and spewing your your moisture around you but they're actually designed to protect the wearer from chemicals or, or things in the environment and so they actually filter a lot of the air coming in um and so we've been wearing those masks pretty much ever since but uh, again there's a few questions Questions that we had, and I'm going to a tweet here. This is I saw this tweet last week. It was by Sung Min Kim, who is a, a White House reporter for the Washington Post, and she put this uh, tweet online. I'm going to actually put a graphic of it here, and she tweeted uh, from an article that was published in the Wall Street Journal, um, and kind of a graph about the effectiveness of cloth masks as well as um, surgical masks and wearing nothing at all, and then N95 masks. And it was actually a very helpful, helpful uh, graph, you know, seeing this first box here in the top left, that if two people are together and they're wearing nothing, um, transmission of the virus or infection could happen really within 15 minutes. Um, if one of the people, if you're wearing a cloth mask, Mask, it ups to 20. A surgical mask, it ups to 30. If you're wearing an N95 mask, it ups to two and a half hours. Um, and then if both people are wearing the masks, you can see that, again, if two people wearing cloth masks, it goes from 15 minutes to 27 minutes. If both people are wearing surgical masks, it goes up to one hour. And if both people are wearing N95 masks, um, it, the protection goes up to 25 hours. I found that that graph really helpful. Um, and I just wanna share the article from the Wall Street Journal where that actually comes from. So if you wanna go online and read the article by the Wall Street Journal and take a look at that graph as well, um, I'll just put it in here into the, uh, into the comment section and you can get that from the comment section. Um, and so that was actually a very helpful graph as well as a really helpful article about why it's important to, to wear uh, N95 masks, especially with the, the highly trans transmissible Omicron variant going on. Um, there was another article I found in CNN this morning. I don't know when it was first published, but I saw it this morning when I was looking, um, searching on this topic. 
And uh, this actually explains and gives a little bit of, of uh, information to how cloth masks and, and even surgical masks are primarily to, pro to protect the people around you um, because they, they don't form a tight seal and they're not um, as thick as other masks. Um, they're primarily about making sure that you protect the people around you from the air you're exhaling. Um, they offer some protection for the wearer, but uh, they're mostly about protecting people around you. Whereas the N95 mask offer more substantial protection for the wearer as well as the people who's around them. And so I found that mask or that article at CNN to be helpful in the discussion they brought in there. But then of course, I wanna just go back to the fact that both of these, these N95 and the KN95 masks are, they're one use masks, right? They're not washable. And so I wanted to find out, is there anything I could do to um, extend the life of my mask? I'm not, I'm not working outside the home. I'm not wearing a mask for eight to 10 hours a day. Um, my children are, I'm wearing a mask several times a day when I go out to go shopping or I'm out in public. And so I just wanted to see, was there anything we could do to extend the life of the mask? And I found several references to uh, the value of placing your mask actually in a paper bag. And if you take your mask and put it into a paper bag, and then uh, seal the bag and keep it there for anywhere from 28 to some people even recommend up to 48 or even 72 hours and you keep it in that bag. Um, it doesn't magically sanitize your mask, but it does uh, protect it from getting more contaminated and it's in a dry environment inside the bag and it allows basically the virus on the mask to die or whatever you know contaminants you had on the mask to die. So it does in effect kind of sterilize your mask. And so I, I saw different references to that, but I wanted to get it from a bit more of an official source. And so I was Googling around and I actually found this um, news post at, uh, at a, a CBS affiliate in Ohio, I think it is. And it's part of their verify, you know, a lot of local TV stations like to have, you know, fact checkers or verify stories. And it was called verify. Yes, you can clean and reuse your KN95 or N95 mask using a brown paper bag. And they spoke with some medical experts and they uh, did some research. And there's actually a fairly good story about why using um, a paper bag to store your mask in for 24, even 48 hours is a good way to extend the life of your mask. Um, they said in the story, they said it's not recommended for healthcare workers, but for other people, um, those of us who aren't in such an environment, it, it is a good way to extend the life of our mask. So those are just a few thoughts I wanted to share. Um, since my family has now, our immediate family has been touched by uh, coronavirus and we, my daughter tested positive we upped our mask game and uh, all of our family is now wearing N95 or KN95 masks whenever we go out in public. Um, and uh, I want to encourage you uh, to consider upping your mask game as well. Um, this Omicron variant is highly contagious and um, they're expecting from stories I've read and heard that it may peak the infection rates may peak. They've already peaked, they think, in England um, and in Australia. And they're thinking it may peak here, even in the US in the next few days or the next week or so. Um, but hospitalizations are still gonna continue to rise as well as deaths. And um, unfortunately, the hospitals are filled really with uh, people who are not vaccinated. And so I highly encourage people, <clears throat> if you're not vaccinated, to consider getting vaccinated. If you haven't been boost boosted, please consider getting boosted. Um, and regardless of if you're vaccinated or boosted, to please uh, up your mask game and uh, do what you need to do, not only to protect those around you, but even to protect yourself. Um, so those are a few thoughts I had. And I wanted to just share some of those as I was drinking, sitting down to drink my second cup of coffee. 
I want to share two other stories in the comment section, and these are primarily just to expose you to a few things that I've been thinking about. I don't have any uh, um, hard and fast thoughts on them yet, but there was a, an op-ed in Politico that I read this morning, and it uh, was written by a member of the Obama administration, and it was titled, What I Learned When I Tried to Close Guantanamo Bay. The, the prison uh, that we were, were running in Guantanamo. And there's definitely some things we need to discuss about that because um, obviously this is a place where we tortured people. And yeah, I, I have some thoughts brewing in my mind about uh, that. And so I wanted to share that story if you're if you're interested in reading it and i may try and talk about it sometime in the next few days i also have been following very closely uh if you know the story that's been going on in chicago where the teachers union there uh decided that it was not safe to be in the classroom and they they been began advocating they actually stopped going to work uh they didn't return to work so that they could do online learning with the students and the, the city, which is actually run by Democrats, um, pushed back really hard and very aggressively um, about the need to go back to in-person learning and really a complete change of, of stance from even a year ago when it was the Democrats who were advocating so loudly for um, uh, protecting our teachers and protecting our students from the virus. And now as the teachers were saying, we don't feel safe in the classroom, it was the democratic leadership who was basically saying, you need to go back to school. Um, now, obviously there's a whole case to be made about the social and psychological health of students and the challenges faced during online learning. But right, even in the midst of this huge rise, this huge surge in infections, I find it very interesting that the Democrats are now really pushing not only to keep schools open, but to keep the economy open. And Joe Biden is both bragging as well as determined about how well our economy has recovered and determined to make sure even though Omicron is surging, that we are gonna to continue to keep our economy open and going strong. Even in the midst of this massive lack of, of testing that's been, that has not been available nationwide. And so again, going back to his campaign, he promised to make and keep the economy front and center. And he's doing that both now in regards to the environment as well as into in regards to uh, COVID-19. And that is creating problems, especially for the people who are more vulnerable. Um, and so I've been thinking about that and pondering that. And I, I may share a few thoughts about that in the next few days. Last, I just want to give a shout out to the Baptist Joint Committee for religious liberty. It was the, the BJC a few weeks ago that um, did a podcast with me. They I was featured in their podcast. And uh, they have a BJC book club. And the book club uh, last week started their On Selling Truths book study. And so I just want to give a shout out to uh, the BJC, the Baptist Joint Committee for Religious Liberty. And I want to thank them for uh, studying our book, and I hope that study goes really well. Um, thank you for, for investing in, in really wrestling with the issues that we're bringing up in our book on Selling Truths. That's really all I wanted to talk about today. I, I'm trying to keep these a bit shorter. We're about at a little over 20 minutes right now, and so I, let me look through the comments to see if I've missed anything. While I was talking, I want to get a little bit better. Hey, Yate, Steve, good to have you here. Beth, thanks for joining today. Um, who else is here? Michelle, thanks for joining from Germany. Uh, Teresa, um, thank you for, uh, for joining this morning. And Adam, 
thanks for making some comments and being here. Jeffrey and and everyone else who joined, I want to thank you all for, for joining me for my second cup of coffee. I hope you have a great day. Um, and uh, I will not be watching the sunrise the rest of the week. It's supposed to be overcast and cloudy, uh, even through the early next week, I think. And so I don't think I'll have a chance to do the sunrise for several days at least if not even a week or a little bit over a week but we'll i'll keep watching the weather and and seeing when i can go out there again i am hoping to do at least one more second cup of coffee before the week ends so either thursday or friday but uh, i can't have my relatives thank you for joining me i hope you have a really good day let me see one more comment just came in um uh, Mo, hey, Yate, hey, Mo, thanks for joining all the way from South Africa. Great to have you here. Uh, you might be getting ready for bed, or it might be even kind of late over there. I forget what the time difference is, but uh, I hope you had a good day and you'll be able to get some good sleep tonight. But Yate, hey, um, I'm really enjoying my finishing up my second cup of coffee here. Have a good day, my relatives. Walk in beauty, and may we learn how to walk in beauty together. A cat and hook on that.